Hello, Motor One. I am here in Immendingen, Germany at Mercedes-Benz Proving Grounds to drive this, the Mercedes-Benz EQXX concept. We've written a whole lot about this vehicle over the past few months from its record-breaking runs to the south of France and to the UK, and now I'm finally going to drive this ultra-long range, ultra-efficient, ultra-aerodynamic electric concept. But before I get to that, be sure to follow MotorOne.com on all of your favorite social media networks. The Vision EQXX is a rolling testbed for future Mercedes electric vehicles. The company set a target of over 600 miles of range on a single charge and consumption figures of better than 6 miles per kilowatt hour. And then it promptly blew those goals clear out of the water, covering 747 miles in a journey from Stuttgart to Silverstone in the UK. During that trip, Mercedes recorded efficiency stats of just 7.5 miles per kilowatt hour. The range might not be impressive if all Mercedes did was shove a huge battery under an existing body, but instead the company went much further, installing a sub 100 kilowatt hour battery and pairing it with an obsessive focus on weight savings. This thing has a carbon fiber number plate for crying out loud, and the aerodynamics are incredible. The result is a curb weight of 3,800 pounds and a drag coefficient of 0.17, two figures that improve dramatically on vehicles with similar battery capacities and footprints. Consider this. A Mercedes-Benz EQS has a 107.8 kilowatt hour battery, but weighs 5,900 pounds and has a drag coefficient of 0.20. During 20 miles of driving at Mercedes Immendingen test track, the EQXX proved a couple of things. For a start, today's crop of electric vehicles have barely scratched the surface of what it means to be efficient. The EQXX's quest for efficiency, though, comes without many sacrifices. This is a Mercedes through and through. How do you like the feeling of total car steering and everything? It's very, very light. And you were saying this is 1,700 kilograms? Yeah, it's, it's 1,755 kilograms of total weight. It feels very light. It's it's just concerning because I don't remember the last time I've driven. I don't think I've, I've never driven an EV that is so light. But yeah. even just in terms of regular cars, you know, we don't drive a lot of them that are, there aren't a lot in the 34, 3,500 pound range anymore. Mm. Yeah. So with this target of 1,000 kilometer range and absolute efficiency, like below 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer is really, really efficient. Um, some things really fall nicely when you, when you do the engineering work in that direction. So um, we managed to kind of go down the weight spiral, like we um, left things out of some parts for example the battery is air cooled with this vehicle usually you'll have a liquid cooled battery but this is possible because the drag resistance of the vehicle is so low that you do not really need a lot of power to propulse the vehicle and uh, this enabled us to really lower weight of the whole electric drive and also of other parts of the systems because when you get the weight of the battery lower then you do not need as much support for the battery in the vehicle mm -hmm. and then you can get lighter rims for example and this really things have been falling really nicely with this project and uh, also every department that worked on the project kind of went even better than their targets have been. So you talked a lot about you know the collaboration between Mercedes-Benz research and development, and then also high-performance powertrains. And can you explain a little bit about like what's gone into that? Yes. So we have been working very closely with uh, Mercedes Formula One engineers from high-performance powertrains in Brixworth for the electric drive, and also from Bragley for the for the chassis. I'm an electric drive engineer, so. Us, we were working with HPP, High Performance Powertrains, and uh, the electric drive is really a product of collaboration between us. Like, they bring this real racing spirit, working on short time schedules in the projects, and we brought in the experience in terms of testing how you develop an electric drive for a real road car, and this really went well together like for example for the electric drive unit the engineers that did the magnetic designs and also the computer-aided design construction works are from stuttgart same engineers that do it for um, production car vehicles and then the inverter 
was brought in by colleagues from HPP, High Performance Powertrains, and those parts, they're like working completely close together mm -hmm. as us engineers did then during the project, which was really good cooperation and helped us all to realize what we have here. Okay, this is a long stretch you're talking That's about. That's a long so. straight. You can go and T plus all the way down this straight, and then you'll see it just rolls. There is a little bit of a queue forming behind us, but... Ah, uh, no worries. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Is this thing sort of like royalty around here on the on the proving grounds? Does everyone give it a wide berth? Yes, well, it is a unique car. We only have one of those, and everybody is aware of, like... I mean, colleagues are asking me, are you really only having one of those, or are you only telling? <laughs> but I'm like, yes, we only have one of those. <laughs> Driving this car on real roads, um, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a great experience, but also you keep on thinking, well, don't do anything wrong. Hopefully no one else does anything wrong and <laughs> crashes into I, the I don't car. Think, I don't think I could drive this on public roads. <laughs> I don't I don't have enough trust in the, in the average, average commuter. Yeah, well, we had all the team monitoring us and I've, well, I felt quite confident because I had all this team around me, mission control taking care of all the technical stuff, and me, I was just focused on driving there. Now you recuperate in yep. D minus or D minus minus. Yeah, so very about me. good, very good. You did not touch the mechanical brake, nope. very good. And then we go straight. Yes. Yep, well done, very good. <laughs> I forgot that I forgot that that turn was coming up. So to give some context, we'd driven that same route earlier in Emma, which is a Mercedes EQB crossover with the powertrain from this, and it's the development mule that kind of informed and gathered data for developing the EQXX. And so I've run that route already. I had some idea of what was going on, but I did forget about that sharp, sharp turn at the end of a long straightaway. It's just, it's so enjoyable. I mean, if you, for people that have never done it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a fun game to play, just managing managing the car with the yeah. right foot, with, yeah. you know, without taking it off the accelerator pedal. Yeah, yeah I, I drive exactly the same, I only drive really one pedal, max recuperation. And I really like it. The funny thing is, if you, you know, you introduce someone to it, they're like, oh my god, I really like this. Mm. I've never gotten a bad reaction from someone driving an EV for the first time experiencing yeah. a regen. Yeah. It's, it's more relaxed because you do not have to change the pedal all the, all the time. Exactly. Especially downtown. It's good. So while we're repeating the route, let's talk about a little bit about this interior because it is really wild. I mean, it's clearly a Mercedes interior. The, the material quality is unbelievable, but yes. it's all sustainably done. And yeah. Mercedes balanced that sustainability while also focusing on lightweight materials. Yes, true. So um, creating this very efficient vehicle um, weight with all of the parts in this vehicle was a boundary condition that we could not exceed. Um, our interior material designers, they did a beautiful job and also the interior designers in creating an interior that is uh, sustainable at the same time very beautiful. So there is recycled materials in here, there is plant-based materials in here, um, there is this uh, cactus leather, um, there is material based on mushrooms which is called Milo and um, the floor carpets are based on bamboo. The floor carpets, for the record, are like shag carpeting from the 1970s. It's very, very <laughs> cool. <laughs> we don't we don't get enough wild carpets anymore. <laughs> and the color palette in here is beautiful too. The, the blue yes. and the the cream and the colored accents here, and you got blue contrast stitching. It's it's very very it's a very pretty interior. And not as not as tight as I thought. I, I expected mm. to get into this thing and kind of be short on space, and it's it's plenty roomy actually. Yeah. Can't wait to see more of what was <laughs> learned here, applied to the other production cars, um, especially all this. Like the just the sheer breadth of information that you have your at your disposal is yeah. is wild and really makes you know 
you can adjust your driving style based on what you're seeing to maximize yeah. range and it's great it's it's epic the good thing is that uh, this is part of a technology program that we set up to speed up our EV development. So we're using EQXX as a foundation for our future production cars. So uh, you're going to see parts of this in future Mercedes production cars. Can't wait. <laughs> cool. All right. So there you have it. There is a lot to unpack about this drive experience. The EQXX is really unlike any other kind of electric vehicle I've ever driven. You have to change your driving style. You have to do what you can to maximize range and it responds beautifully. I don't know exactly how efficient I was and where I ranked with the rest of the media on hand, but you can go to motorone.com to read the full story and find out just how things shaked out.